Good morning. My name is Rachel Dr. Ray Rivers, and I want to welcome you to Love Yourself, Love Your Life, the workshop. I am recording live from the Midwest Natural Hair um, Expo in St. Louis, Missouri. The purpose for this workshop, participants will briefly assess the state of their life conditions using a holistic approach to self-love and their life's purpose. The workshop encourages individuals to evaluate five key areas, including mind, body, heart, spirit, and emotions. As a result, participants will gain a deeper sense of self-love and life purpose awareness and how to create a plan of action to achieve these goals. So a little bit about me and my journey. So how did this all come about for me, the person that you see today? Even as a little girl, I always, always wanted to be in business for myself. It's just that burning desire that never left, even as I became an adult. So four years ago, when I moved back to St. Louis after college, I went to undergraduate in Oklahoma, and, and I also studied for my master's there, and then I went over to the University of Arkansas to pursue a doctoral degree. Moved back to St. Louis, and guess what? I could not get a job. I was unemployed from, I moved back Father's Day uh, 2011, and I was unemployed until April of 2012, but the first job um, that I uh, was hired to do was in retail, and I was making I was basically making minimum wage. I think it was like 7.25 an hour or something like that before they increased it to 7.35, and it was a small store. Uh, I worked for a Korean lady, and um, she sold women's church suits and hats and it was it was a very interesting experience and I was so frustrated like my degree is like almost a doctorate degree and I just couldn't understand you know I was going on interview after interview um, at all the major universities here and even uh, some on the Illinois side and I just was not um, being able to close the deal but in during the summer of 2011 my book released and I'll show you a picture of my book. Wait, let's see. My book. Here's a poster. Journey to Self, Journey to Love. You can see it. And um, had a really good, good summer and on into the fall uh, promoting my book. And you know, having book signings and going on radio shows, um, hanging out with friends and family. But, you know, I was still treating this thing as a hobby. I wasn't really taking it seriously, not knowing that, you know, I could really make some money off of this thing. <laughs> and that, you know, I didn't realize that this was a part of my life's purpose, that something that God had instilled in me. Um, to be able to share with others and inspire others because, you know, there's maybe many of you out there who you may want to write a book or you may want to start a business and, and live out your dream. And so it was just a major roller coaster in my life, up, down, happy, sad, frustrated. And when you're operating in that type of energy, it's hard to really manifest what you really desire for your life. And so here I am today, learning how to master this thing that we some of some of us call the law of attraction. Um, and the, the older when and if you think about in your childhood, it was easier to just have fun and and play and do those things that make you feel felt happy, feel happy. Um, but as an adult, you have to consciously do that. Like, I know a lot of people, when they first meet me, they can't really tell my age. I, I look younger than I am, and my spirit is very youthful. But I believe that that's 
how you can continue to be happy in life is doing the things that bring you joy. And those are the things that, you know, become a part of your life's purpose, those things that you are good at doing, um, that no one can do those things like you. And so that's why I'm here today. And Love Yourself, Love Your Life is actually the title of my new book that is coming out that I've been promoting for a couple of years now it's actually the follow-up to the first book um journey to self journey to love which was short stories and poems but love yourself love your life is actually the self-love handbook okay we know that we're supposed to love ourselves but how and so in this book i actually get more into detail about how do i discover my life's purpose and how do i um you know better love myself and there's there's many ways and that's going to look different from, from person to person. What Rachel needs to do to love herself is going to be different than what some of you may need to do to love yourself. And so it's just a, a process of thinking about where you are mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally. That's it, right? And financially. But that's a whole other subject. And so in order to keep yourself positive and focus on your dreams and your goal and your vision for your life, you want to use affirmations. So when I speak of affirmations, I'm talking about your I am. What is your I am? You know, in the Bible, God says, I am that I am. And even Jesus says, who do they say I am? But how many of you all know that when you am something, you are calling it into be. So whatever you attach the word am to, it brings it into manifestation. So for example, you can say, I am rich. And you might not be rich. But if that's your affirmation, you, you are calling that into being and bringing that into your life. <coughs> you could say, I am sick. I am depressed. And you're also calling those things into being in your life. So positive or negative, you are bringing these things into being, into your life. So when I ask you what is your I am, I want you to make a list of all of the positive things that you would like to bring into manifestation for your life. Moving on to the next topic. Um, think about when you were a little kid. What is it that you wanted to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I just remember when I was at Langston University, I had a professor, um, Dr. Alex Lewis. And, you know, this was in graduate school. So I had already completed four years uh, with a business degree. And um, Dr. Lewis, I think he knew that I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> I was good at school, so I kept going. School was fun. I wasn't ready to leave. Um, I wanted to be there with my sorority sisters and all the friends that I made. And I wound up getting a job on campus working for a professor, uh, Dr. Sotani. That was my first job out of undergrad. And I worked in a computer lab um, as an administrative assistant, office manager. And I also had an opportunity to do some teaching uh, working with the professors, faculty, and staff. Because in 2002, the online learning was becoming popular. And so the college students were coming to the university uh, with uh, computer backgrounds, but the teachers were needing to get up to date with the new technologies. So I worked in the computer technology integration lab while studying uh, urban education and Dr. Lewis and he would always be like uh, he would say you are lazy you are smart but you are lazy and that was Dr. Alex Lewis <laughs> and he would be like what do you want to be when you grow up what do you want to do with your life and I knew what I was good at like if I go back and look at my transcript I always excelled in my English classes and I loved writing not knowing that I could have taken a different path to become this author that I am today. Um, I thought that once you chose a, a business, chose a certain track, you had to stay on that track. I didn't know I could have probably stayed and, you know, got gotten a second degree in journalism. Um, 
or English education or something like that. And I was running from my calling of being a teacher. I really am naturally a teacher. And you can ask my cousin, she used to say, she uh, always had us playing school. You know, I enjoyed school. I loved school. And I wanted everybody else to have that same passion for learning. And so that's how I, I'm still like that today, even with the students that I work with. I want them to have that same um, passion uh, for learning. But also, we need to alter our teaching styles to get the students more engaged. And so that's just a little activity. Think about what it is that you wanted to be when you were a kid and uh, are, are you did you become that person? Um, and, and I know that we're all continuously um, evolving. But it's about taking those limitations and barriers off. You know, some people may have to go to uh, back to school to um, to uh, live out their life's purpose. So moving on, what is self-love? What does that mean? Self-love, really coming into a real acceptance of yourself and knowing yourself and embracing yourself. And for me, that was something that I had to learn to do because sometimes when you're a child, you may not have had a great upbringing. You may have been surrounded by people who <laughs> didn't tell you they loved you, didn't show you they loved you. It may be because they didn't know how to love. You may have been around um, other children who teased you because of your, your hair uh, being kinky or nappy or short. And that was me. I was that little girl. And so I grew up kind of like with this little chip on my shoulder that I didn't even know I was really conscious of. And, and when you carry these things from childhood, it can, it can stunt your growth. So even as adults today, we need to dig deep and think about um, what do I need to let go in order to move forward in my life? It could be something from um, past hurts, uh, from past relationships and things that didn't work out. Um, just like with me, my confidence dropped when I wasn't getting those uh, jobs that I was applying for four, uh, four years ago. It took me four years to get an entry-level position that I'm working now. But God, God has a purpose for everything that we go through, not knowing that a job really is not for me. Um, because I am a creator and so are you. And I have all this creative energy and sometimes that nine to five, um, it can burn out your creative energies. And so um, self-love. And so I believe there are five key areas that we need to focus on when we're talking about loving ourselves and becoming whole and healed so that we can live a purpose-driven life. Um, so first is figuring out what you're good at, what God has called you to do. And then it's focusing on those five key aspects. And those five key aspects include, in just a moment here, so the five key aspects that we're focusing on are your mind, your body, your heart, in your spirit. And this is actually uh, Dr. Ray's hierarchy of self-love and self-actualization, the five, the five self-love needs. And I've taken this from uh, Maslow's hierarchy um, of needs, which I know many of you all are familiar with. I know we learned about it in studying education because um, if those basic needs are not met, it's kind of hard to get through to the student. And it's the same way for adults. If, if these um, needs are not in an alignment, it's going to be hard for you to be at peace and, and move forward in, in making those changes, significant changes for your life. So this is just um, exercise for you to do an assessment. So when I talk about the mind, what are you thinking? How are you thinking? Is it positively or negatively? <clears throat> Is the glass half full or half empty? 
I'm actually going to go on and pause and stop right there. I'll be back. 